Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome on Adaptations Day uh, 2020. Um, uh, welcome on the uh, University of Economics and Business. Uh, we are very happy that uh, we can see you, uh, we can, you can see us uh, today uh, on today's e event. Uh, we are waiting for some latecomers. Uh, we are late waiting about a few, about one minute, uh, something like that. And after that, we will be officially opening uh, the Adaptations Day 2020. Wait. Okay, I forgot to say that I'm Lucas also, and I will be uh, leading this uh, event for you today. And uh, now it's time to officially open uh, our uh, today's event, and it's my great ho great honor and pleasure to invite uh, the vice vice director for research and I international cooperation, cooperation, Mrs. Bogusława Dralik-Skulska. Please welcome to the stage. Good afternoon, good morning, it depends where are you. Uh, dear students, dear friends, we are very happy that you are with us, that you will visit our university, our beautiful city Wroclaw and our uh, country. I hope that uh, you will be happy here with us, with our society at University of uh, economics and business, that next academic year will be uh, very good for you. Uh, doesn't matter if that we have disasters and other problems in our uh, country and in all over the world. I would like to wish you a lot of success, a lot of good friends, a lot of happy days. Uh, I know that uh, students' time is a very good time for everyone, uh, for every young person, and I hope that your friends, uh, your partners will be happy with you. I wish you not only a lot of success during your study, but also a lot of success in your private life. Uh, be happy, be together, be with our society. We are for you. Uh, stay with us as long as you want, not only one year, but also, mo also in the future in your uh, business life. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, officially open opening of our, during, uh, of our, of our event. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, how to find yourself on our uh, university, uh, what is uh, worth to paying attention, uh, what, uh, what to avoid, and um, the older students are uh, pre prepared this event for you uh, to, to help you to, to find better on our uh, university. And now it's uh, the time uh, for the speech of our coordinator, uh, Oscar. Uh, our coordinator will be uh, coming uh, here uh, for, for the for, for speech. And the coordinator of our uh, today's event, uh, because uh, this event is made by uh, by older students, not not by uh, the the um, the university, but older students are, are preparing uh, for you uh, this uh, this event. And now Oscar Sivan, the coordinator of uh, of this day. Okay, uh, dear students, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, you in our university. I hope that you will enjoy this uh, time, these presentations which, uh, which, which we created for you. Uh, I know that the situation is different than every one of us uh, was, uh, was expected, but I hope that it's gonna be great time with us, with our presentations. So make yourself comfortable and enjoy the things that we prepared for you. Thank you. Yes, it's very important to pay attention uh, for today event because uh, we'll be talking, uh, as, as I said, uh, uh, for, uh, about many important things. Now it's uh, the time for the present check. Uh, the present check, uh, we will send uh, you a form on the chat um, and some link to the form. And uh, it's, uh, it will be uh, nice, it's obligatory, sorry, it's obligatory to, uh, to, go to, to form that, to, um, to do that form. Uh, we are sending you the link for that. And after about one minute, you, you, you've got some time to, uh, to do that. And after one minute, we are going back. 
Okay, we are back. Uh, now we are going to the next presentations. Uh, the presentations about a few things that you really need to know on the beginning of your students' road. Uh, we are going to, to talking about university structure. We are going to uh, talking about students' rights and duties, uh, students' dictionary, uh, financial helps, help. And uh, after that, uh, we've got for you the campus movie that we are showing uh, on, on that, uh, some our our buildings and so on. And after that, also so the uh, very important message for you and these presentations uh, will be uh, leading lead by Anna and Michal from uh, students government thank you Lukas hi everyone um, so we're today here to speak about those topics and I will let Michal to start well we shall begin with the presentation on the structure of our university this presentation will be about the most important people at our university and you will also find out about uh, who to turn to when the questions arise, which those inevitably will. And we shall begin. The university has authorities. We'll start with the rector, and he is the default executive body of the university. He represents the university's interests outside of it, and also manages it on the inside. Uh, he is responsible for many duties, and the rector directs uh, courses with the help of vice rectors. The rector of the UEBW in Wrocław is Professor Dr. Uh, Andrzej Kaleta. Uh, he, uh, has a, he has a representative function as a senior uh, person from the vice rectors, he considers possible appeals against the decisions of the rector and the, well, executive body. Then we have the uh, vice rector for didactics, uh, Professor Edmund Cibis. Then there's the vice rector for international cooperation. Uh, which is the Professor Dr. Dr. Bogusława derlich Skulska, And last but not least, there's the Vice Rector for Finance and Development, Dr. Batłomiej Nita. Now we can start with uh, resolution authorities. Our first resolution authority is uh, Senate. Uh, which take the most important decisions all over. Uh, it affects program, grant programs, uh, study regulations, and also who is employed and who you can uh, have classes with. The next one is University Council. Um, it's uh, been elected by uh, Senate, consists of six people, uh, including three outside of Russell University of Economics and Business. Uh, so here's uh, Martin uh, Chetensky, uh, CEO of uh, CCC SA, uh, also chairman of uh, University Council, uh, Piotr, uh, Piotr Krupa, CEO of Krukasa, and Krzysztof uh, Domaracki, CEO of Selena FMSA. Council members from the University of Economics include Professor Krzysztof Jajuga, Dr. Uh, Sylvia Vrana, Professor Krzysztof Kos, uh, as well as the president of the student government, uh, Radosław Kus. Now we have the deans, and uh, we will con uh, on which uh, we will concentrate because these are the people you will have uh, you will have to address when the problems arise. And you will probably contact them. Uh, the Dean of Student Affairs is Dr. Anna Naciernia Emerich, and she's responsible for many things, such as long term leave for uh, reasons of health, pregnancy, <laughs> or being a part uh, parent, random, or, uh, well, cost events that uh, impact your health. Also for the commission exam uh, of her subject, um, the resumption of studies uh, for a semester, the resumption of studies in order to take the diploma examination, the removal from the list of students, 
uh, the revocation of the decision to remove from the list of students the, for the transfer of uh, from course to course, transfer from part-time to uh, full-time studies, transfer to another university, um, depending on the semester. Um, she uh, consents to secretary the consent to secretary the bachelor or master thesis. Uh, for the approval of exam dates, for the examination uh, from students' internships uh, for health reasons, for uh, re requesting to award the diploma in from uh, uh, of an ap appropriate, appropriate letter from the rector, for considering the students' complaints and applications, uh, for settling the disputes regarding the implementation of the provisions on the uh, implementation of the diploma thesis and the application of JSA. For cooperation with the Dean of uh, Education in matters of education, quality uh, assurance and faculty as, uh, accreditation. For cooperation with the student government um, and other organi student organizations, for uh, for recognition of previous uh, grades and uh, credits when transferred from other university, for applying to the uh, rector to create a class group, and for submitting requests to punish students, uh, well, to the rector. Even so, the responsibilities are quite wide. This uh, lady is quite helpful and don't afraid uh, to contact her in a uh, case of the, um, which were presented by uh, Michal before. So um, now we will uh, talk about deputy deans. Uh, deputy dean, mm, uh, here you can see uh, Dr. Habilitova and Professor Helena Dodic. Uh, she is responsible for uh, courses such as, uh, which are those uh, provided in uh, Polish language. You can find her in room uh, 208 in building Z, uh, the highest, the glass one, um, and uh, you can ask her uh, w to resolve your problems such as uh, missed uh, mark in the USOS or if you are not signed up for some courses you are taking. Uh, that's the person you uh, write, your, um, write your problem about. And here you can see on the uh, map that the building is uh, located in the, uh, at the crossing uh, of uh, Kamenna and Slenzna. Uh, as I mentioned before, the glass high building, you will not uh, miss it for sure. Uh, then we move on to Dr. Vazhenes Michalczak. He is responsible for many of the Polish courses uh, uh, that are, well, given here on our university, and his office is located in the building A in room 122. This is the building responsi also responsible for uh, which you will uh, visit to uh, solve many of your problems regarding, well, just general, general, general quality of life stuff. So keep that in mind. And as you can see uh, where the dean's uh, office is located. And uh, now let's go to the last but not least, uh, Dr. Alexandra Spulak. Uh, she's responsible for such courses as business informatics, finance, international business, and business management. So um, this is probably the most useful uh, for you. Uh, her office is located in building a, room 15. Now you will see where it is located on the campus. Uh, I will maybe put some um, addition to that map because that office is located like between two buildings, A1 and uh, A. So uh, if you're studying, uh, if your course is provided in English, that will be your dean's office. 
And that was it for the structure. Now we're changing the topic and we will talk about some students' rights and duties. And since we'll move on, since we moved on, we'll start uh, with the agenda. The agenda includes the studentship, the savoir vivre on the university, the school versus university differences, the help for students in any shape and form, the students' rights and duties, as well as student rights ombudsman, the person that you'll turn to when the situation turns dire. The studentship. Uh, by the time of the student oath, you become a member of the student's uh, society. Yeah, on the day of uh, the diploma exam, you become an alumni. And after graduation, you can enjoy the privileges of a studentship until the 31st of October, that year that you gradu graduated in. Those may include uh, the grant, uh, the discount of 50% for the of the public transport tickets, of the price of the public transport tickets, the discount of 51% uh, of the train tickets, and uh, those discounts as well as the student ID has to be refreshed uh, each semester. Uh, the um, bachelor. Uh, if you're studying the bachelor degree, your ID is valid until the 31st of October. And if you're studying the master's degree, your ID is valid until the defense of, the fee of your thesis. So maybe if you live on a campus in the dorm, you won't use public transport that often. But if we talk about trains, Make sure to go to the mountains, uh, see, and uh, for those purposes, 51% discount is quite a lot, so make sure to have your student ID to be valuable to have that discount. Now we move on to the contact with the university, and uh, that contact may include project, uh, uh, that contact can be established to protect the student, and that is uh, first and foremost important thing. Uh, needs to be signed until the 5th of October. The dean can remove uh, the student from a student uh, list in the, uh, if the contract is not signed or breached and contains the terms of the agreement and a list of uh, payments that the university can charge you for. Uh, so uh, a lot of students while studying their studies in uh, our university uh, are um, 18 years uh, old, but if you do not have 18, uh, 18 years old <laughs> on your uh, calendar, let's say so, uh, make sure you are uh, legally um, you legally can sign this contract. If you cannot, um, make sure to have that, like the paper which authorizes you to sign up the co this contract without the parent when you're arriving to uh, Wroclaw. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now we shall move on to the fact that we're all uh, the student government. All students uh, that uh, choose their representatives and those rep representatives form a student government council or RUS in the Polish. Uh, information, uh, information about the election will be given on the student government fan page, of Facebook fan page. Everyone, any, everyone and every, anyone can run for the position of the representative. Don't forget that and sign up. The, the fact that you may not uh, be a part of any organization is not, not a problem. The fact that you're likable and that you have, well, the ability to speak in front of a crowd, that is the thing that matters. And the fact that you want to defend the rights of your fellow students, that is the most important thing. Any, everybody uh, can attend the meetings of the Student Government Council. That is the second thing. You do not have to be a part of the council to attend the meetings. But only the members of the council can uh, take a part in uh, voting. 
on important matters. Now we move on to savoir vivre. So, uh, how to communicate with uh, lecturers? That's really important and pay attention right now. Uh, even so, while having classes with the lecturers, uh, they uh, will probably be friendly and gladly um, will sp uh, speak to you uh, so you can understand each and every subject. But nevertheless, be polite and while sending uh, their, uh, them emails, uh, make sure to use the science titles like doctor if it's a PG member of uh, our society uh, and professor uh, if uh, she or uh, he has sh such title. Make sure not to not use such words as hi, hello, but rather dear, uh, dear doctor, dear professor, I'm writing to you about such issue, right? And after that, while uh, describing your uh, issue, make sure to end this, um, this mail with the words like best regard, kind regards, and then add your name, surname, the uh, group you're attending, and your index number. That will be quite useful for the lecturer uh, to identify uh, the class you are attending and to resolve your problem issue way more faster. Then we have the most important well, person in your group. That is your group leader, of course. On the start of which, well, you have the ability to uh, uh, choose them in fr from your group. That is, the group leader is a person that is a representative of a group and is there to solve problems. He uh, connects you with the uh, lecturers and the student government. He is there to resolve your issues that may arise on the everyday basis of your studies. Uh, he is responsible for writing emails to lecturers and contacting them, well, and if any need arises. Probably you will choose uh, him or her uh, during your first classes. You will uh, also might uh, hear l such words as group boss or starosta uh, or starostina. Uh, those words are for uh, identifying the group leader. What does it mean to behave, uh, to behave good during classes? Uh, so we're old enough to uh, define our university life from our private life, and that's the main issue. Make sure you're wearing the proper outfit, especially now when classes are being held online. When you're attending classes, wear your usual outfit, not pyjama, only if it's look like casual outfit, let's say so. Uh, active uh, participation in classes is welcome, and in some cases, if your lecture uh, defines so, it might give you additional pluses, then at the end of the semester uh, will, uh, will be plus to you being free of uh, exam. That's really good, good thing, right? Also, during classes, you're supposed to have your phone muted. Um, that the issue that should be followed by you, no matter if it's uh, online classes or offline. No eating, no being late. Uh, we will uh, later talk about being late. Well, you might be only if it's uh, like max maximum uh, 15 minutes, when we will describe it uh, in, in which cases uh, it is possible. Uh, also, it is not allowed uh, to make, uh, you're not allowed to make photos or record any videos if a lecturer does not uh, give you the permission to do so. Uh, so while classes are now being held uh, online, uh, make sure you ask your lecturer first if the meeting can be recorded and after that start the recording, not otherwise. Now we shall move on to the topic of school versus university and the differences between those two. Uh, the plan of studies. Uh, the bachelor degree uh, takes uh, six semesters to complete. The engineering uh, degree takes seven semesters to degree. 
uh, to apologies uh, to complete. And the master's degree takes uh, from three to four semesters to complete. The academic year uh, can be found on the our, on our university's web page, and as uh, well, the dates fluctuate from year to year. But the general rule of thumb is that we begin in October and end in, end with summer. The this year's academic uh, year. It starts on the first uh, first of October and takes time takes till the thirteenth uh, of uh, July. The winter semester uh, that you have now started uh, takes uh, time from the first of October till the second of uh, uh, February two thousand twenty one. The winter holidays take time after that, uh, between that, uh, from the 23rd of uh, December to until the 3rd of uh, January. The exam session of the winter semester takes time uh, from the 3rd of February till the 16th of February 2021. And the second attempt session in which you can correct your mistakes and uh, pass the unpa previously unpassed exams, takes place uh, between the 17th of February till the 21st of February. Uh, as you can see at the uh, plan of the academic year, uh, the exam session has the uh, fixed date. Uh, however, sometimes your lectures might uh, put those exams earlier, uh, so you have, uh, let's say, more time for yourself during uh, those break between semester or even the uh, to start. You can start your uh, summer break uh, faster, but those are. Um, dates that all the lectures should keep in mind and also you as uh, students of our university. So, classes. What type of classes uh, there are and uh, how to define them? Uh, as we can see uh, on the presentation, there you have lectures, workshops, laboratories, language classes and seminaries. Lectures, those are more meritorical um, classes where lectures uh, probably will tell you more uh, in words and describe uh, the subject you are studying uh, more theoretically, while uh, during workshops you will do some, for example, case studies uh, or uh, do some calculations if it's accounting or mathematics. Uh, what about laboratories? Uh, those are mostly common for um, on Polish uh, course such as Zarządzanie i Inżynieria Produkcją. That uh, course has uh, laboratories. Uh, the fourth type of uh, classes is language classes, uh, which uh, if you were offline, you would probably intend, attend at Building S, where the uh, language uh, center is located. But now we all uh, enjoy our classes on Microsoft Teams. Uh, then the last one type of uh, classes is seminaries. Those uh, you will probably have, uh, you will have, uh, on your last year of studies, on your bachelor um, uh, degree or, and your master degree. I will, under, uh, I will again repeat, your last year. So don't expect to have seminaries during your uh, first year or second year of studies. And what is uh, it means your, uh, it's, it's absence, but sometimes uh, lectures forget how to tell it in English, as also me here uh, while reading the presentation, sorry for that. But uh, you can have only two absence during each class. Uh, so if uh, either of lecture will tell you that you can have only one, that's not quite right because it's being um, defined in the uh, legal uh, document that you're allowed to have two uh, absence without uh, any uh, approval, uh, without any explanation to your lecture, not more. 
now we move on to the plan of studies. Where can it be found? Well, it can be found uh, in the link uh, displayed right now uh, on the presentation. Uh, type it in, see where it leads you. Maybe you'll find uh, the plan that you're looking for, the plan of your year, and the plan that you should follow from, well, yesterday till the very end of the year. Uh, types of examinations include projects, tests, short tests, exams, and exams. Uh, those, depending on the type, take a different amount of time, and uh, with the notable exception of projects, are taken uh, during, usually, one class. The projects can be a little bit longer, depending on the uh, on the class and on the person that leads the, this class, your professor, uh, those projects can take up from one year to uh, from one week. Apologies, till I don't know the full semester. Really, the sky is the limit at this point. Those can also be uh, partaken in groups, so keep that in mind and find the friends that you can rely on to complete their part and well in time. The number of hours, uh, classes each week, uh, uh, classes can be taken or rather, uh, yeah, taken uh, either each week or every two weeks. And uh, the fact of when it, well, when it is taken uh, is determined by the amount of hours in the whole semester that has to be complete. For example, if you have classes each week, then you'll have well, around, I believe, 30, 37 hours of the uh, given uh, class and the entire semester. Then we have the ECTS points. Those points uh, uh, are the way that we measure progress. You need to gain 120 points on the, if you're studying the bachelor degree, uh, or 210 points if you're uh, studying the engineering degree. One each ECTS points uh, equals to roughly 25 to 30 hours of your personal work that you uh, spend on studying or, uh, well, just diving into the topics mentioned in the classes or, well, uh, lectures. No matter what type of classes you have, uh, just bump into the people, communicate, be open-minded. If you don't know some person, it's not a problem to do the project with. Uh, those classes, like even the case studies during lectures, uh, really helped me on my first year, uh, as well as uh, uh, f furthermore in uh, life, to just communicate with people, make friends, and just be more open-minded and enjoy the student life a little bit more. So didactic surveys. It's a student right. Yes, you have this right. And moreover, uh, those didactic surveys are really helpful. Uh, it has a great impact on the teaching level. Make sure if you have some issues with the lecture and uh, he or her does not respond uh, to your messages uh, or just, do, just don't want to resolve the problem, make sure to fill out such a uh, survey and just to communicate uh, with our uh, university that uh, the lectures uh, are not being held uh, with your expectations or are not being held with the contract that you uh, signed uh, while starting your um, student life. It's, as I underlined before, it's really important and moreover it is anonymous. So uh, feel free to um, talk about your uh, issues. You can fill them uh, in also system uh, until the end of the semester. Uh, it is uh, only uh, possible to fill them uh, out uh, like at the, uh, at the end. So the uh, start of the surveys takes place uh, around like one uh, week before the uh, finals, before the uh, sessions. Uh, and, uh, as I mentioned before, I've uh, been held till the end of the semester. Now we move on to grades and examination. Uh, the rest of the studies, 
student who resigned from his or her studies due to unforeseen circumstances may resume them, resume them in a well, limited amount of time. It is required to pass all program differences in order to resume the classes. And in uh, cases of um, unsatisfying results, there is a law to restart your studies again from scratch. The intellectual property protection. Uh, on our university, an anti-plagiarism system is, uh, well, widely used and cheating is not accepted. It is uh, depending on the uh, professor that you're having classes with, you can be either expelled from the class or forced to write the, uh, the test again. So keep that in mind when choosing to, well, not be fair to your colleagues and your professor. While defending also your bachelor thesis or master thesis, uh, the uh, important and non-avoidable uh, uh, stage of that process is uh, getting through the anti uh system. So yes, that, that thesis should be read by uh, you, not from Wikipedia. The rights and duties of the student. Uh, the student is particularly obliged to attending classes following the study regulations, uh, uh, passing exams, attending student internship, and fulfilling all agreements presented by uh, or in a study, pl uh, study plan. You are also uh, obliged to follow the university rules, whether they include uh, not visiting the campus during the pandemic, or uh, turning on your camera during classes online. Your rights. You have a right to a dean's leave. Uh, a dean's leave is a period of time that you can take away from the classes. You are not obliged to uh, attend them during the dean's leave. And after your, the period of your dean's leave, you have to, well, resume the classes in the uh, system that you previously agreed to. Uh, you have the right to evaluate uh, evaluation of the deductic of your deductive deductive progress, and that includes the evaluation of the uh, plan that your professor foresaw for your classes, as well as uh, the for the professor to check your well knowledge through the tests, short tests, or, you know, projects. You have, around, uh, you have a right to discounts, as we mentioned, mentioned before. The discounts include discounts on trains, public transport, etc. stuff like that, so keep that in mind. And finally, you have a right to financial help. Here we have to underline the sad fact of, well, the fact that if you're paying for your studies, you are not... Uh, you do not have the right to take the to appeal for the financial help of a university. Uh, and now uh, some more words about disciplinary liability. Uh, in our university, uh, the disciplinary committee uh, is uh, presented also as a colleague court. Uh, in case of you breaking uh, down the law uh, of university, of course, not the uh, one on the street, uh, you will for sure meet uh, with a disciplinary committee or colleague court depending on your case. A calling court is composed of students that signed up for the job. Those students may, but uh, do not have to be a part of any and all student organizations. Uh, the law regulations. The regulation of uh, the Prawo o Szkolnictwie Wyższym i Nauce, also na known as Ustawa 2.0, is as the thing currently implemented on our university is the and is the uh, main document that you have to follow uh, right beside the uh, study agreement you signed up when well beginning your studies the study regulations as i mentioned uh, previously 
the internal regulations of studying for uh, each entity. That is well also included in the study regulations, as well as the university statute the list, uh, that lists all the rules and rights that you have at our university. Uh, code of administrative procedure. Uh, those decisions made during the studies are administrative decisions. Uh, it is worse to get a copy of a received or given paper. Uh, so nothing more to say uh, here. Appeal. Uh, that's your direct right uh, to uh, appeal against the decision as a form to look into a case again. Uh, in case you are not agree with the decision of the dean, uh, you might write such uh, appeal to the uh, higher level, uh, for example, rector of our university. Uh, the, uh, there's 14 uh, days um, uh, deadline uh, since receiving uh, uh, decisions. So uh, after receiving a decisions, you have those two weeks uh, to make your appeal. After that, it will not be possible. In most cases, as I mentioned before, it is to the higher entity. Now we move on to informational for people with disabili disabilities. Uh, now lend us your ears, please, because those are some of the most important and important informations that we'll give you today. The rector's preliminary for disabled people is currently Dr. Kristina Gilga, uh, that presides in room 208 of the building A. That is the building that we showed you before when uh, introducing you to deans, uh, deputy deans, and vice rectors. The email contact for Kristina Gilga is, uh, is displayed right now on, in the presentation. And that will be your first uh, point of contact with her. Just you know, write to her, and keep in mind that you are you are, you are to use you use your student uh, mail that you were given at the beginning of your studies. That al that that email allows uh, the uh, workers of the university to ID you more you know faster and gives you the well, how to say this. Uh, to resolve your issue faster, I as suppose. we mentioned below That's it. before. Uh, students write uh, ombudsman uh, for the um, uh, whole Poland. Uh, as you can see, the uh, link uh, is available on the presentation. In case your issue is smaller and can be resolved uh, in the walls uh, of our university, contact student rights ombudsman uh, on uh, our university. As you can see, the mail is uh, rps. Um, uh, describe your problem, uh, the type of help you need, attach needed documents, and uh, leave the contact details. Give the most of the information you uh, you're, uh, possibly uh, have, so as we mentioned before, it will help to resolve your issue faster. Currently, the uh, student rights ombudsman is Monika Payong. You can contact her uh, via that mail. So as for student rights, uh, that's, uh, that was it. And now we move on to the next session uh, about students' uh, dictionary. We'll talk about more uh, about some terms, uh, what does that they, they mean, and why you need to, need to know those terms. And now we shall start with the dormitory. Uh, it is a place where the students live. Currently we have two, well, at our campus we have two dormitories. The dormitory Ślężak as well as the dormitory uh, Przegubowiec. They are loco located at the opposite, opposite side of the street that, uh, well, <laughs> touches our university. Uh, when studying at a university, you have the possibility of getting your own place at the dorm, such as Przegubowiec or Ślężak, as mentioned before. The rooms of the said dormitories, uh, well, differ quite widely, 
But the general rule of thumb is that when you take, uh, get a place in Przegubowiec, you have your own uh, bathroom to, well, not to share with anybody else. If you get a place at Ślężak, you have to share the bathroom with the whole floor of students. Not the whole fl floor, but just with the module. As for me, I'm definitely team Schlenjak. Uh, me and Michal, we both lived in the dorms. It's probably the heart of the whole student life. If you're studying, studying your studies and you are, make sure to get that room in a dorm uh, and you spend your some time at least one semester. There are a lot of uh, students who choose to live in the apartments, uh, then moved on to the dorms just to be closer to the campus, just to feel uh, the beat and uh, to make their uh, student life uh, way more fun. And as I mentioned before, when you're living in the dorm, you spend a little bit less money on public transport. That's, as for me, it's a huge. Uh, plus. Now we move on to the Department of Student Houses. Uh, the, its job is to uh, administrate the administrate the dorms. Uh, that includes checking in new tenants, taking care of the dorms fa uh, facilities, as well as uh, exacting payments from you at the end of each month setting up rules for tenants to abide by when living in the dorms and uh, overseeing the, well, obeying of the uh, safety regulations by the occupants. Currently, the most important uh, regulation is that no uh, people from outside of the community of our dorms can enter, well, any of the two dorms mentioned. Keep that in mind when, you know, when you want to uh, ask your friends to come by. That's the regulation that uh, is uh, now on due to the pandemic. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next day, you cannot leave uh, the dorm. Dean's office, uh, department office, uh, we uh, mentioned previously, where you can uh, direct your uh, issues uh, and just ask uh, for help the right person that is re responsible for your uh, course. Uh, is it being held in Polish or uh, in English? Make sure to write to the right person. Student quarter, that was the 15 minutes I told you about. Yes, you may uh, be late for classes, but maximum of 15 minutes. Also, you as a lecturer. So if the lecturer is like five or 10 minutes late for a class, don't leave the class because probably after that you will have one more uh, less uh, absence uh, without uh, explanations. So just keep in mind, 15 minutes is allowed for you as well as for the lecturer for being late. Then we have the rector's hours, and those are simply hours uh, free from classes. The, uh, the rector grants them on special occasions or on unforeseen uh, occasions that require that no student uh, partakes in well classes or lectures that given time. Then we have the Foreign Language, Cla Language Center, or in Polish, uh, CIO, and is a place where almost all of the language uh, lessons take place. That is, that was true before the pandemic, before we all had to transition to studying online. Now the studying of uh, your language studies uh, differ in no way from your other classes and lectures. Uh, you can also take uh, part in extracurricular language classes like, I believe, Spanish or Polish, if you're uh, well from abroad, for example, from UK, Ukraine. I believe we also have Chinese, but 
Yes, we, yeah, we have, uh, I guess, Japanese, not sure about Chinese, uh, but uh, those classes were held while we uh, were offline. Uh, the best uh, way to uh, update this information is just to contact uh, Foreign Language Center directly and ask them if they have the language courses you're interested in. Now we move on to physical education and sports center. Uh, this is the place when, where most of the PE lessons take place. Uh, a few training halls, a pool, a gym, and many other facilities can be found there. Uh, it is located uh, behind the uh, Przegubowiec uh, mm, dorm. And that is the place that you'll, vi you'll have to visit on the well, on two semesters of your studies in order to pass all the required uh, physical education. Uh, but in this, this semester, due to the uh, pandemic, classes uh, are being held uh, online. So as you might guess, no uh, direct physical uh, acti uh, activity. Uh, but those uh, theoretical knowledge will be uh, present for you. Uh, also, the uh, sign up uh, sign up for uh, you cannot now sign up for the physical activity uh, due to the regulation made by the uh, rector. Uh, so just uh, keep in mind to be up to date with all the information by following uh, university uh, page as well as student government fund page on Facebook. One important side note while we're here. Uh, if you're on your fifth semester of studies and you have not yet passed your first uh, semester of physical education that is required, you can write an individual appeal. Uh, and by this appeal, this appeal, when accepted, may grant you the ability to uh, pass the classes uh, when nobody else can. So keep that in mind, visit our webpage, and if you have this, this situation uh, described, uh, right to the Physical Education and Sports Center. Matriculation, uh, the huge event of our university, it has the solemn ca uh, character and also is combined with the uh, inauguration of the academic year. Uh, this year, uh, inauguration will be held on October uh, 8, if you're wondering. Um, but in th this year, uh, additional will be held online as well. Uh, Economalia, the huge uh, fun event uh, held by students. The, uh, this uh, event take uh, part um, in a span of a few days, usually in a May. Uh, for those days, uh, you have the rector day, so you are free of classes, uh, which means you're totally allowed to have fun and enjoy yourself uh, the, during this event. This event is organized by the student government, as I previously mentioned before, at the end of the May. Now we move on to seminaries. Uh, those are classes held on the last year of your studies, so don't expect to be, well, getting them if you're on the first or second uh, year of your studies. The, their goal is to prepare students for their thesis uh, writing and defense. The person, the professor, most likely, that uh, guides you to your seminaries is a person who will help you uh, pick a topic of your thesis and guide you through the process as best as they can. Thesis defense. Is an, ev is an event during which you present your degree uh, uh, dis dissertation. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, apologies for that. Uh, for your master's engineering uh, or bachelor's uh, thesis. Uh, in, the, uh, in front of a committee. Uh, the committee, the, co uh, committee, <laughs> the committee, consists uh, of a thesis advisor, thesis uh, reviewer, and sometimes another research uh, assistant. They have the right to ask questions which the student is obliged to answer. 
uh, colloquially speaking, defend himself and his work that he has worked on the previous year. So who is a status advisor? You will probably hear such word, a word as promoter. This is the uh, Polish uh, word for the, uh, that person. Uh, as uh, Michal mentioned before, person who is tasked with helping you to write that thesis, either it's, either it's bachelor or master one. Dean, the most important person in the department. Uh, we uh, pre previously presented you the structure, so uh, now you know who that person is, and she's, uh, holds, she holds the power over the department uh, and makes sure uh, everything, everything is good during your studies. A deputy dean is a proxy to the de dean. That's the simplest explanation. Of course, the topic is much well deeper, and the and his or her uh, mm, 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 responsibilities. Mm, responsibilities. Thank you. Uh, are much grander than that. But for that, well, visit uh, visit the web page and write to them. Write them an email. The rector, the most important person, as we've, as we've previously mentioned, is currently Professor Andrzej Kaleta. Uh, he holds power of the, over the university and through prorectors manages the educational, didactic, uh, didactical, cultural, sports, uh, economic and organizational branches of our university. He is the head chairman of the Senate and uh, is elected for a three-year term of office. Vice Rector, uh, those were also described uh, before. Uh, in our university, there are three of them. Uh, an employee, uh, as we previously mentioned, not to uh, go through it again. Just remember that there's such a position as well. Group leader, as well, was presented before. Your group boss, Starosta or Starostina, those will be chosen uh, during your first classes or even was already chosen on your group chat your index uh, well it is colloquially called a student's diary uh, for college students uh, it is used to enter credits for objects and uh, grant uh, and granted uh, granted exam results uh, they have not function functioned at our university for several several years now and they well, when uh, given out, took a form of a small, uh, cute book. Uh, uh, now, uh, your uh, everything that was previous previously to be uh, wrote uh, written into the index is written into the uh, USOS online system. So uh, we are uh, keep in touch, visit the web page frequently because. If any problems arise, uh, the faster you react, the faster they, the, they can be uh, corrected. Uh, one note for me, make sure to uh, check your uh, USOS, uh, to check your mail more often, more than one time per day during uh, exam session, uh, even like a few weeks before, because a lot of important information is uh, being uh, c coming to you, make sure be up to date with everything that is going on. Now we have lectures. Uh, well, we've described it uh, already, I believe. So just to underline the fact that you lectures uh, are one more type of classes. As you rem remember, I uh, described those as well as. Uh, class, uh, which uh, also, just to remind you, you have classes, laboratories, um, uh, language classes, and seminars during your last year. The office hours of your professors and people leading your classes is a time designated for students to ask specific uh, questions to the lecturer. Uh, about the uh, issues relating the uh, studies that are, you know, led by them. There's nothing more to it, really. So, e-learning classes uh, in the form of an online teaching. 
Well, as we mentioned before, the most important thing now is that you have to remember about them, attend them at Teams and uh, turn on your camera because that is required by our uh, latest university regulations. Uh, also, uh, during our event, uh, further in the agenda, you will have the eight uh, IT uh, class where uh, authorities of our university will uh, describe you uh, in details what is Microsoft Teams, what is ePortal, and how to use them properly. Individual study program is a special form uh, of studying which allows students to uh, specialize in very specific field uh, of study. In case you want to have such, make sure to direct your um, your um, not issue but your will to the uh, dean. Um, individual sim of study, also known as uh, IOS, uh, is uh, electronic plan of study allowing students uh, enroll for uh, two or more uh, courses. And now the test. Uh, checks the knowledge uh, acquired on the lectures in uh, uh, short written form often held multiple times throughout your semester. Session is a period at the end of each semester intended for uh, examination when classes are not held. Uh, it is known also as uh, sessia, but for you, you just can define it as session or finals. Stressful time, but you can do it. You can. Trust me, we all can. <laughs> Uh, and now exam, uh, you, uh, f depending on what class uh, you have, depending on your, uh, depending on your lecture, uh, you will either have the colloquium and the exam or just uh, the exam, uh, in, uh, for example, as in the case of uh, OHS uh, training. Uh, is, uh, it is, uh, as for exam, it is the obligatory examination during the uh, finals. Uh, so make sure to write it probably to study before. Just do good with your grades. Now we have the zero term. Uh, it is an exam held before the session usually before the session. It's optional and voluntary. Sometimes it entitles to one more attempt uh, in case of a failed uh, exam. It's, well, it's an exam before an official exam. That's the easiest way to describe it. Uh, it gives you one more uh, additional try to uh, pass the exam uh, and also in case you pay, uh, pass it earlier, you have more time during break between semesters or in case of uh, uh, summer semester, you can start your vacation earlier. Now we have the retake. It's an additional chance to pass the exam usually at the end of the uh, session or after it, uh, if you failed the original exam. It is students' right to have at least one uh, retake of the exam, so keep that in mind. You do not always have to you know, pay for getting the classes retaken next year. Retake the test, have it be, uh, get it behind you, and enjoy your uh, vacation. Uh, one more uh, option to pass the exam, which is actually the last uh, chance for you to pass it, is the commission exam. Uh, that is um, uh, your last chance. And if you're uh, agreeing to pass it, make sure to study well, because there will be no second chance in this case. Language classes are obligatory uh, for all the students of our university. Uh, I believe they take four semesters to complete. And you're, depending on the language you study in originally, uh, the classes start either in the second or in the third semester of your studies. 
Uh, depending on what uh, degree you have, bachelor or uh, master, uh, the number of semester you have, language uh, classes um, is different. As for example, for master degree, you have only one semester of English language. Even so, if you're studying in English, you'll still have English classes during your first semester of studies. The dean's leave. Uh, we've mentioned that before, I believe, but let's go to it again. Uh, a maximum uh, of one academic year of break during the study plan in case of a serious illness, maternity, or other important random events. Also, no, uh, as well as uh, taking foreign uh, practices or studies abroad. Uh, throughout Dean's leave, student uh, keeps their students' rights. So keep that in mind when, you know, taking the leave. Enjoy your 50% discount. Student internships. Uh, currently, they are obligatory. And they usually take up to two weeks uh, of practice held in a company of your choosing. Uh, at the end of the fourth semester, usually during your uh, vacation. A little side note here, if you've already worked in a field that allows you to pass the student internship, you can apply for it to be, uh, you know, accepted beforehand. That way, keep that in mind, that way you don't have to uh, retake them uh, after your fourth semester. Also, by doing some student activity in student organi organization, you may pass a student uh, internship. So that is one more good reason to join the uh, student organizations. That was it for uh, student dictionary. And the last theoretical topic we will discuss is financial help. Uh, let us switch the presentation and I guess uh, we will, it's, it's really good to uh, mention one more time that if you're paying for your studies, uh, you cannot uh, ask for financial uh, help. So keep that in mind. And for those uh, who have, for example, Karta Polaka or they uh, have the status of European U uh, Union resident, uh, that information is just right for you. The type of financial help include a bursary, a benefits for people with disabilities, academic performance award granted by the rector, and a one, uh, one-time grant that can be granted each semester. General information. Uh, financial backing is being grant, uh, granted to a student of a single field of study. Uh, and so if one studies two fields at once, uh, only one backing can be granted to such student. Uh, it is granted by a student bursary committee uh, upon the request of a student. And is, uh, can be granted, uh, is granted by director upon the request of the Senate. Bursary. Uh, students of the first and the second degree are entitled uh, to the bursary, but not for a longer period of time than six years. It is paid monthly for up to five months and uh, is based on average monthly net income calculated for one family uh, member uh, in the previous year. Uh, the maximum average net income for a family member in this case is 1,051 uh, uh, zloty. Uh, so <coughs> keep this uh, in mind. Uh, f uh, second topic is uh, we talk about benefits for uh, people with uh, disabilities. Uh, those benefits are paid monthly for up to nine months, and amount of benefits depends of your uh, level of disability. Academic Performance Award, that is the award that you can say is awarded to the best of the best, uh, have uh, high grades and is granted for the academic year and is paid monthly for up to nine 
months. The award is granted to winners of international competitions, winners of uh, finalists of their uh, central level competitors, uh, medalists of the uh, competition for the title of Polish champion. Uh, academic uh, Performance Award is awarded to 10% of students in a given field of study. Uh, and uh, the minimum average grade is 4. So if you did not study well and you have the lower grades, uh, that, uh, that um, award is not right for you. One side note to that. Uh uh, the uh, the the academic performance award cannot be granted to a person who conditionally uh, who was promoted conditionally promoted to the next semester who was repeating or is repeating the semester and to a person who was punished uh, with a disciplinary penalty. Uh, the one-time grant can be uh, filed for uh, filed any day of the academic year, and uh, the student can be granted said financial help once each semester. How to submit the application? Uh, firstly, by registering uh, registering uh, in the uh, USS web system. Uh, there you have, you'll find the declaration of income and the application for financial help. Then after that you have to print the declaration of uh, and the application, then attach an annex number five and an annex number six when applying for the bursary. Additionally, uh, require or any other, other additionally required documents specified in well, on our universi uh, university's web page. So, if you are uh, qualified uh, for s any financial uh, help, um, those uh, which are submitted for nine months uh, period, make sure to submit your application uh, from first uh, uh, to uh, October uh, twenty. So, like from yesterday, you can already uh, submit your application for such aid. Uh, bursary, as we mentioned before, is registered uh, on application in the OSOS web, and as I previously mentioned, make sure to submit it from first to uh, first from October first till the October twentieth. Uh, for people with disabilities, uh, register an application in the uh, OSOS uh, web uh, later uh, on. Make sure to be up to date with the dean's uh, resolutions. Uh, as for academic performance uh, award, the term uh, is still not um <coughs> defined, but also keep uh, in mind that uh, one-time grant, uh, you can uh, apply for it uh, during the whole year. Uh, that was it, if we talk about financial uh, help. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention, and uh, we will now switch to the um, some promo uh, uh, clips about uh, projects, and we'll be back in a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Uh, so, as you see, it's uh, the campus uh, video, beautiful one. Uh, make sure to visit it um, one time. As uh, here on the video, you can see Campus A, where the main uh, buildings are located, where the whole authorities' lectures are um, have their offices. And now Campus B, the dormitories, SFIS uh, building and C, uh, CKO building, which we have our life today. Now, the main, 
where I suppose the entrance to our university is displayed. There's nothing more to it, really, other than it's cute, <laughs> I suppose. Here you can see the building E. Most of the classes can be uh, are taken there or given there, provided that the academic year goes according to plan. The building E is displayed right now. The entrance was from the outside. Now we have the simplex that is the bureau of the uh, student organizations, including uh, student government. Now you can see building A1, a building where which you'll uh, visit if you need if you want to get in contact with uh, the dean. That is the square between building A and A1. Uh, economic was uh, previously. Uh, make sure to make your picture after defending uh, master uh, or uh, bachelor uh, studies. Uh, that's building D. The canteen and um, uh, bureau is located there. And now we can see uh, rectors, uh, rectorate uh, building uh, G. Uh, one of the last buildings is a uh, uh, library, I suppose, or the entrance. One of the entrances to the library, and uh, the connected with that building P, where two uh, big study halls are located. Those study halls can be joined to create one big hall. That glass building is the library, beautiful, and have uh, a lot of the books you might uh, lend, and also have some rooms you can book to study. Now the glass one building Z, which is located on the crossing of Kamena and Shlenzna. Uh, so th there are uh, computer uh, laboratories, classes, also as lectures being held. And now my favorite one, dormitory Schlenzak. Uh, so um, the bigger amount of students are uh, living there. Here we can see the, uh, well, the building that we're uh, talking to you from right now, uh, the building. CK. CK. Apologies. Now we can. You can see the entrance to the uh, Przegubowiec uh, dormitory. This is this is the dormitory that I live in, and personally, I think that it's the best dormita dormitory that there is. This is the space behind the building that we're currently talking from. The building B, where uh, uh, a lot of student organizations have their offices as well. Uh, so now on, you can see a buildings uh, SF uh, and C, where the physical class is taking part. The swimming pool uh, are, uh, is also located there. So yeah, that's that said. Our beautiful campus. Even so, the classes are being held uh, online. Uh, make sure to come here. Also, the now you can see Zapshagubia, uh, the sphere between uh, dormitories, CKO building. Now you can see the CO, the building where uh, most of the foreign language classes took place when there was no restrictions on well having them. And that's it. Thank you. That was our uh, That was our campus. Thank you very much for watching. And you know, visit us even though you cannot enter. Even the pandemic on. Make sure to come here uh, with a coffee uh, during your break and just to chill to uh, to, to to be present in the heart of the student life of every student of Russell University of Economics and Business. Uh, and as for uh, OHS uh, training, uh, yesterday uh, there was a um, post on student government fa uh, fund page uh, about obligatory uh, training you're uh, supposed to uh, pass. Uh, make sure to read the instruction to use the right uh, key, as, uh, key to assess uh, the training on um, e-learning platform. Uh, so uh, make sure to do that uh, before October 4th. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thanks, uh, Anna and Michal, for these presentations. Uh, it was uh, good uh, to know these uh, whole things uh, because uh, some of you uh, wrote on the on the chat that uh, that you should have uh, rector's days. Uh, yes, you've got the rector's days from your normal lessons, but for that you've got the adaptations that that days that they are obligatory. And uh, we will be checking the presents one more time. Uh, I, I see that uh, some of you are going uh, go go out from for from our life. Um, it's uh, good to stay with us because now we will be talking about some IT systems, about some softwares that we are using on our university, uh, and uh, mostly in this time when the, there is the pandemic time, the when when we are using the technology to to uh, connect to um, to learning, uh, it's very important to know everything. And uh, now it will be some short uh, video with uh, some presentation about that. You really need to pay attention now. to IT world at Wrocław University of Economics and Business. I hope that such young people as you will be interested uh, very fluently in IT issue. Second slide is agenda. Firstly, I will describe you basic application and system. After, after I will tell you about Wi-Fi Microsoft Azure DevTools for teaching. At the end of today's speech, I will describe situation Wi-Fi in uh, dormitories and give a contact to help desk. Third slide about central authentication services. What is CAS? Central authentication services. CAS is a single, single sign-on protocol for the web. Its purpose is to permit to user to access multiple applications while providing their credentials. Only once such user ID and password. So I mean one user ID and password for almost all IT services provided by the university. Fourth slide, in central authentication services, we have few helpful applications, such as student email and O365 application, university study oriented system, and a learning, a learning platform, sorry. Here you have the addresses of this application. On a fifth slide, if you click on the of the link of Instance Portal Platform, we will see such a view like this on slide five. Sixth slide is a index number. What is this? Is the most important information for us. It is your student ID. It is called in Polish numer albumu. Check it and remember this number. Everyone at university will obtain it for you. Excuse me from you. Hi, I'm Henryk Milaszkiewicz from IT Center. I have a pleasure to introduce you to IT World at Wrocław University of Economics and Business. I hope that such young people as you will be on the ninth slide. You have your student account by the Microsoft uh, application. Office 365 is a student email account and the other is online apps if you available in Microsoft Cloud. On the ninth slide, you have see, you see uh, how does it look like. On the right side, you have a setting icon. And here you can change the language. You can set 
English or Polish and other. Slide 10 show more detailed how to do that. As you can see, here's your written change display language. On slide 11, you see the dashboard of the Office 365. The basic dashboard, sorry, with the information your last activation. Okay, uh, 12 slide uh, is uh, information about your mail, student mail. Every student mail have a student ID, which we called numeral bumu, at university domain. Here you have an example. Your email you see in the Outlook app, which is the first app of Office 365 suite. On the next slide, you see all available apps in Office 365. You can check them on your own. The 14th slide, you have the link of the Office 365 and this is how connect with it. So, okay, uh, slide 15. You see Office 365 is an online application. The MS Office apps, they will be available with 40 days. I will send the instruction in a separate email. On slide 16, you can see of main page of, of the university. When you click on the student icon or tab, you will see the banner stay at home, be online, at Polish mean zostań w domu, zostań online. Behind it, every important information about about application of teams because the teams application is your communication communication platform slide 17 show you how download application from web page you can use you can use the web page as well you have two possibilities application or web page teams uh, this is the most important platform for you because communication platform with teachers every detailed information about how to use teams you will see and send that instruction and website. Okay, uh, let me see on uh, slide 80. University study oriented system. What is this? It's a student management information system supporting, supporting services, processes of studies. The system serves students the providing information on faculties fields of study and specialities, staff and students database, seminaries, registration rules, financial payments, surveys, deadlines and the other information that uh, applies directly to students. This is one system for all student services. In another slide, Next slide, you will see how does it look like. On slide 20, you see link about this system. Slide 21st is about Moodle. Moodle is a learning platform. Next to the Teams, 
Moodle is used to blended learning, distance education, flipped classroom and the other e-learning projects at university. This is where you build teaching during the pandemic semester. A 20 second slide uh, show us a Moodle print screen on the website. The next slide is a link to the uh, Moodle platform. Okay, uh, we will go to the final part of the presentation. 24 slide. Something very interesting for you on the campus, but you have to be here if you, you would like to use it. I mean about university Wi-Fi. You have an access on some building buildings on uh, this slide. The network name UE Studenti and another uh, network name Eduram. So, um, slide 25 is a uh, Azure DevTools for teaching. What is it? Microsoft Azure DevTools for teaching or a simply Azure DevTools for teaching is a Microsoft program to, po to provide students with Microsoft software design. Microsoft developer cloud computing access and learning resources. In a long story short, you have Windows 9, Windows Server, Microsoft Project and the other softwares. On the next slide, you see these softwares and applications. After logging to Azure platform, you see that it's very simple to use. Web page address Azure DevTools for Teaching is in slide 27. Okay, mm, on slide 28, and if you have uh, any IT problem, you can write an email. On the address smile at ue wroc.pl Remember to use official student mail account if it is possible. Okay, next slide is uh, dormitories. Dormitories, Wi-Fi in dormitories. You have uh, access on the uh, on the on the internet and when you have a problem just write an email itdorm.itdorm at ua.vrots.pl Hi, I'm Henrik Milaszkiewicz from IT Center. Okay, uh, okay friends, you, 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 you saw uh, the um, video from, uh, from the IT um, department uh, and uh, they are available for you also in their office in the, from 7.30 to, um, to ter, 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 uh, 3.30 uh, after uh, the TPM. And okay, uh, after IT, the, I, I hope that you know everything. Uh, now, if you've got uh, any questions, uh, you, you had the mail that you can um, you, that you can write to that to that and after uh, the, that presentation we are going uh, to the next presentation we are moving on to the student activity uh, our university is known from that that we are we've got very active students and now also uh, and uh, one more time Anna and Michal they will be talking about that hello again uh, so, as it was previously mentioned, we will talk about student activity, uh, how you know uh, also student uh, activity in student organization. In our university, there's 11 of them. And first, let's start with the student government. Um, as we... Uh, 
as we know, uh, the Syrian government is uh, known for uh, being the uh, biggest uh, student organization uh, in um, Rostov University uh, of Economics and Business. It is an independent and professionally uh, managed entity which plays a leading role uh, in shaping academic life. Uh, may I ask for the next slide? Okay, sorry for that technical issue. Thank you. Um, as the uh, mission of student governments uh, says, we work, we support, we inspire. All students of the University of Economics and Business combine to create the student government. And from those students that you, well, inevitably, mm, uh, belong to, belong to yeah, you also the create world. student government. We also create the, uh, the student government council, the body that uh, passes uh, most of our regulations. On uh, projects and didactics uh, combine to create our student government. Really, we're about uh, combining fun with uh, being helpful to others, being helpful to each other, uh, helping other organizations, them helping us, and in the end, we helping you and leading your best life at our university. And projects are a big part of that, projects like Economalia, uh, provide a very needed break from studying for and from stresses of everyday life at our university. Yeah, just always remember there should be a balance between studies and fun. What is our structure? Briefly, uh, the management board of the student government is president of the uh, student government and uh, vice, uh, three vice president uh, responsible for uh, different um, fields. As for the board, uh, the uh, board consists of um, uh, people you uh, see here, administration, uh, didactics and law, finance, human resources, uh, sales, marketing, Me. international cooperation. Right, yeah, you, there you can see um, Michal, uh, as well as um, the president of uh, students and cultural and sports uh, information, one, uh, the second uh, student uh, organization, uh, Adrian Ivanchak, and uh, the last but not least person uh, is Mateusz Sekta, the president of uh, Travelers uh, Club Beat, because I travel. Our departments. Uh, our student government consists of, the few of, of a few of them. And the first one is, of course, administrations. administration. Uh, this little department is responsible for the contact with other university departments, uh, for the creation and archival of documents, for inventorization of fixed assets, for taking care of the student government's bureau, that is Simplex, that we also showed you at our promo video of our campus, uh, for management uh, of the reservation system, and for the IT support and events. Uh, so, as Michal previously mentioned, the administration uh, department is taking care, our office is nice and clean, and it helps us to operate well. Next, we have didactics and law. Uh, uh, didactics and law is responsible for aiding students in their problems, for the contact with the university departments regarding said problems and the input required from the well student community, for the interpretation of uh, regulations, for creation and improvement of uh, regulations at our university, and so for swift recognition and understanding of the university regulations. Do not mistake this uh, committee for one that is not working. These are a few 
very dedicated people that uh, devote every second of their uh, university life to helping you. So even though you may, they may not be as loud as the other ones, they are definitely one of the most active ones. Yeah, there are uh, people uh, yeah, in Syrian government who really uh, make sure your rights are protected. Department of Finance. Uh, this department makes sure the financial situation of Syrian government as well as uh, Syrian organization is on a flow. Uh, the, uh, the department has a st uh, stable contact with university authorities. Uh, they uh, also manage the accounting for projects and initiatives, conducting annual audits, and make sure it's being held with the law. Uh, so as for next departments is human resources, also known as HR. Uh, those people are all about integration. They make sure the members of student governments uh, have fun, uh, they, um, that they're uh, having good relationships, uh, and uh, in case of some conflicts, those are the guys who help to manage them as well. Now we move on to the Department of Sales. Uh, the responsibilities of the Department of Sales include establishing and maintaining relationships with partners, partners that help us organize this glorious event for you, uh, for obtaining financial and barter funds, for research uh, of needs, uh, negotiation and sales tactics, for the creation of personalized offers and mailing campaigns, and for understanding the business world. This is a commission that appeals to anyone and everyone that is uh, you know, bold enough to reach out to others and to uh, get something in, uh, uh, well, in a negotiation, in a just plain day-to-day -day talk that uh, turns into an, uh, a big, eventually turns into a big oppor business opportunity. They make sure we have good relationships with our partners, so you students can uh, have those giveaways and to participate them as I may kindly remind. The one is uh, already ongoing on our fan page for uh, its burgers Shamani, so make sure to check it out and maybe you will get the burgers. Then we have the marketing department. They are responsible for managing social media, uh, uh, for organization of promotional campaigns, for graphic design, for uh, addition of photos and videos, for the creation of innovative uh, promotional com campaigns, and for plain visual appeal, let's say. And uh, keep in mind, even though our uh, fan page uh, practically spans, uh, mm, yeah, spans information uh, information as of now. For example, yesterday we put up uh, four four posts. That may be a lot, true, but well, it's truly nothing you can handle. The information that we give out, that the Department of Marketing give out on the on our uh, fan page, is one needed and usually and often required to keep in touch with everything that goes on uh, at our university. That's right, and the last uh, department is international cooperation. They're responsible for cooperation with foreign student organization. Uh, they are also responsible for exchange of experience with foreign students, uh, aiding foreign students getting uh, around uh, our university. Uh, also, they are the ones responsible for promotion our university on the international arena. Uh, they also help, uh, that's one, uh, and the important aim of this department is uh, elimination of language and cultural uh, barriers. Uh, so let's now talk about our projects. First is Adapt Check is a, a nine day um, trip uh, for uh, students uh, of the first year uh, of the bachelor 
uh, degree, uh, some time for uh, them to hang up, to uh, enjoy uh, some theme parties, uh, to get to know well before studying their student life. Uh, on October 1st. And the second project is Adaptation Days, uh, the one uh, project you are now the participants of. Uh, so, next one. Next one is probably the biggest and the loudest one. For sure. Economalia. That is an event spanning a few days, uh, usually, I believe, in May. Correct me right. if I'm wrong. Yeah, at the, at the end of the May. Um, if there, uh, if the opportunity arises, that event will be organized next year. So you know, cross your fingers for the quick, well, pandemic end, so that we can all enjoy those few glorious days uh, during which we can attend concerts, uh, meet up, play games, and just play and have fun. Because that's the other thing, that's the other uh, side of the student life, is having fun. That event definitely provides lots of it by the buckets. Second big, well, maybe not second big, it is the second, the biggest, the second biggest one. Uh, it is the open days. Uh, that event uh, is addressed to all students that are not yet sure if they want to visit our university. And uh, during that uh, special day, they can visit us, they can uh, talk with our professors, with the res uh, representatives of uh, each uh, field of studies, get to know our campus, get to know our people, and, you know, maybe maybe decide to sign in. Uh, this year edition was uh, online and if you were up to date with a uh, project you probably saw uh, Farina's uh, essential there as well as uh, candidate um, uh, PDFs prepared for you. Shkolenia uh, Starostov, known as uh, uh, workshop, uh, let's say this way, for uh, people, uh, for your group leaders, also known as boss uh, leaders, for them to know the university better so they can uh, do better on their position as your group leader. Uh, that that is the three-day uh, trip for them to integrate and also, as I previously mentioned before, uh, get to know the university structure better. Uh, UE uh, party, the uh, fun uh, projects, um, which is also held by uh, student uh, government, uh, so students uh, can have that balance we previously mentioned. Uh, other projects that uh, is being held is uh, academic planner, uh, respirator, urmates, um, economic bridges, uh, the ball integrator, and the great uh, economic test. As we as you can see, the student government is a huge organization full of fun, uh, which integrates people, make sure uh, that we have fun, but also do everything to protect your rights, to make sure you feel good uh, being the student of our uh, university. What about other organizations? Because as I previously mentioned, there's 11 of them, and we talk about the one, maybe two more, but there's more to those. Uh, there is the... Uh X in Polish, the Cultural and Sports Information for Students. There is the uh, Because I Travel Club, for those that enjoy uh, uh, long strolls along the beach. There is the ZSP, uh, there is the NZS, the uh, Vigor, the ESN, uh, Cognitis, uh, Business Center Club, ISEC, Enactus, and Coders Crew. Uh, those organizations have a lot of projects, as well as student government, uh, which are more um, 
didactic aims uh, or maybe more fun uh, to them, but the biggest of those are um, Velka uh, Draka dla Dzieciaka, it's a cher uh, charitable project uh, which is organized by uh, ZSP. Uh, the week of uh, events uh, which aim is uh, charitable. Uh, another one is the project of uh, X, uh, it's a student uh, run, student academic run which take place in May. Uh, Auto Stop Race is a project of uh, travel club because I travel. And Vampiriada, another one charitable event organized by NZS. The recruitment to our glorious uh, students' government has already started. So please, uh, if you if you're interested, if we if we interested you. Sign up, you have the time till the 10th uh, of this month to fill an online form. Then uh, you wait for the results that will come on the 13th. And uh, then if you pass the first stage, uh, you'll, be, uh, mm, you'll be asked to, for a short recruitment interview that will, be, that will take place from the 14th till the 15th. Uh, of this month, and of course, and of course, uh, on the seventeenth day, there will be uh, there will be uh, the results of our little recruitment. So stay tuned. Uh, even so, the uh, process might look stressful while you uh, we are talking about those dates. It's totally not. It's just uh, for the organization to better know you, uh, to better know your needs, what you're up to. So uh, take that chance, join student organization, do something more uh, than just study in Rostov University of Economics and Business and just enjoy it too. Uh, the fullest. Uh, to contact student government, uh, you can just bump them into uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or just visit our uh, brandly new uh, fun page. That's it for now. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Have a Take nice care. day. Thank you, Anna and Michal, one more time for this uh, presentation. And uh, as you can see, there is a more, there is a lot of opportunities to to uh, to make something more, uh, to to uh, do something more on our, our university. And I I hope that you will be uh, you will be engaged engaged on, on some uh, in, in some projects, you know, some uh, organizations. And now we are uh, going to move forward to forward to uh, presentation of the foreign language center uh, SJO in Polish S S J O, uh, like something like that. Uh, you will be. Uh, for sure uh, using the SJO. Uh, Mr. Jerzy Hup, please welcome to the stage. Hello. I would like to, first of all, I'd like to thank the student government. You're doing a great job with this event. So congratulations. It's a very useful initiative. And um, um, my name is Jerzy Hup and I represent the Department of Foreign Languages. And I don't think there is a need to uh, explain or even convince you that uh, foreign languages are important. So I'm kind of sure that uh, you understand it uh, yourselves. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, let me just say that our, we feel our job at the Department of Foreign Languages is to make sure that you use the foreign languages correctly, <laughs> properly, appropriately with rich vocabulary and uh, uh, for practical purposes. Um, as you know, currently we are, we are teaching online. Um, uh, what will the next term bring is a big question mark. We really don't know. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting our students in person again, but we're also ready to, uh, to carry on uh, teaching on the uh, uh, platform. Um, Probably some of you might be wondering why foreign languages are not included in your uh, weekly timetables. Don't worry, everything is under control. Um, it's simply that we're beginning the uh, courses uh, 
from semester two. So we will see you this way or another in February. Nevertheless, today let me tell you a few words, a few fundamentals, a few basics about our courses. Um, first of all, the terminology, um, lectorate is the Polish word for the obligatory curricular courses uh, of, uh, Engli of English or other uh, languages. We also use the word kursy, which translates as, as courses, and it rather means the um, uh, non-obligatory afternoon commercial courses run by our language school. And I will tell you about them as well in a minute. Um, SJO, Studium Języków Obcych, uh, many students just call it SJO, is uh, our name. There is no logo uh, on the screen, but uh, it's a very characteristic uh, kind of speech bubble with a half a globe in it. I'm saying that because I would like to encourage you, even today, to uh, enter the website and see how it works. It's split into two parts. One is lectorate, so the obligatory uh, compulsory um, uh, curricular courses, and the other is centrum examinacina, and I will also tell you exactly what that means. The easiest way is probably to go on the university website and scroll down to the very bottom of the page and uh, see the little globe and click, it, click on it. Um, so uh, perhaps I will ask uh, the, ne the next slide. Uh, there are two compulsory foreign uh, languages that you uh, have to take. One is English and everybody has to take it. Uh, and uh, there is one additional foreign language, um, French, Spanish, German, Russian, Italian. And since I'm, I guess I'm mainly talking to foreign students, Polish. So you can also pick uh, the language that you may connect your future with to some extent if you uh, study here. Um, and as I said, the classes begin in the second semester, so not yet. And uh, it, as far as English is concerned, it's split into three plus one uh, semesters. Three semesters in uh, the uh, first uh, level, uh, the BA level, and then there is one extra semester uh, uh, when you are an MA student. In the case of the other languages, uh, the additional foreign language, you just have four semesters of uh, that one. And uh, in order to put you in the appropriate groups uh, so that your level is uh, adjusted, uh, you need to take a, a placement test. Perhaps I should say right now that uh, when I said that your classes begin in the second semester, it's it refers to the BA students. If there are any MA students among you listening and watching this, uh, remember you're starting you're actually starting next week, right? So if you still haven't done it, or if you, if you don't realize that, make sure that you uh, go uh, to our website, find your name on the list, and uh, do the placement test. We need to know uh, which group you should um, you should go to. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, let's concentrate on English. I teach English. I teach uh, um, mainly advanced uh, courses, so there is a good chance that I will meet some of you, uh, fingers crossed, personally or um, uh, elsewhere in any other way. Uh, as I said, English is compulsory for all students. It's the language of business and uh, economics, as you know. Uh, it is taught at all levels, Practic practically all levels. We need to establish uh, which level you are first. And this is very important, we teach business English. This is uh, English for special purposes, professional uh, language of economics. So, um, for example, if you're a native speaker of English, and uh, sometimes I'm asked, uh, am, I, am I expected to, to uh, attend classes as well? The answer is yes. <laughs> because we teach business English, unless, of course, you have uh, some uh, qualifications, a diploma or, or any other document proving that uh, you um, are at a particular level of uh, language competence. Uh, or you can talk to your teacher as well and uh, arrange an alternative way of uh, crediting the course. But um, from my experience, I've had some native speakers in my uh, groups uh, 
it's a win-win. So the group is happy and you will probably also, definitely also benefit from that. And there is, maybe so much about English, uh, there is something that uh, when you see the next slide that you will be surprised probably. So can I have, yes, <laughs> Chinese and Japanese. So for a couple of decades now we've, uh, off, we are offering, we've been offering these two rather exotic languages. It's, a, it's an extracurricular offer, which means a couple of things. First of all, it, it begins now. So if you want to uh, uh, enroll, uh, you need to visit our website and arrange uh, that you are uh, actually, that you join us. Uh, the second thing is that uh, it is not graded. It is, it is not featured in your uh, grades list, in your index books uh, anywhere. It's just for you to enrich your CV. It's taught in the afternoon and for the first time in history, it's taught online. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting, the Chinese and Japanese teachers from, uh, very, from two very prestigious institutions actually uh, uh, have those classes uh, from Japan and China. So quite, quite an interesting thing. Um, next slide, please. Now, uh, apart from your obligatory um, lectorate, uh, we are also exam an examination center, quite prestigious, four decades as well, uh, certified, a uh, couple of really uh, important uh, international organizations, uh, and we are licensed to give uh, those exams. And you, as you can see, uh, LCCI, London Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Pearson. Pearson is the largest educational uh, organization in the world, but also University of Cambridge, Goethe Institute uh, uh, and Cervantes Institute. And in order, if you want to be well prepared for any of those examinations, uh, you should probably join our courses, our afternoon courses. Next slide, please. Yes, we call it the language school and uh, they are commercial, so, uh, but very well priced. <laughs> so currently they are taught um, online and we are in the middle of recruitment, so if you would like to fill the void, which is the first half of uh, uh, your academic year without a foreign language, and then maybe after year two, when you no longer have lectorate, you can join us. Um, we will uh, prepare you for the exam or simply improve your language skills. We teach both business and general language a couple of languages, uh, so if you enter the our uh, website, SJO uh, website, it's the section Centrum Examinacine, the one on the right, or if you're using a mobile device, it's the one at the bottom. Uh, so it's mainly preparation for international language exams, but simply uh, also a good occasion to uh, communicate, to, uh, uh, to have some conversations, uh, or generally meet nice people. It's, uh, uh, all, all of the courses are diploma awarded and uh, most of them span the period of 110 hours. Uh, our teaching hours, you're probably aware of that, uh, are 45 minutes. We teach in blocks of 90 minutes. I'm sure you're aware of that, but just, just making sure. Uh, for instance, uh, at um, the typical term, a typical semester is 15 weeks, so if you have obligatory lectorate, obligatory classes lasting three semesters, so it's 90 um, hours plus the MA uh, semester of uh, 30 hours. So uh, you can do a 110 hour diploma awarded course in our language school within a single year. So almost the same um, a number of uh, hours taught. Well, uh, maybe our uh, contact details, uh, so the next slide, please. This is our um, um, email address, website, uh, telephone number. And uh, when we are not teaching online, our building looks like that. <laughs> nice white uh, building. A little bit um, away from the campus, if you leave the campus from through the main gate, it's across the street behind the block of flats, two minutes and 27 seconds of, of, a, of an easy walk, right? So basically it's, technically it's not on the campus, but it's kind of close enough to, to, to be part of it. Um, 
So, as I said, we're hoping to be back soon in this physical uh, location. For the time being, we're teaching online. And finally, uh, the last slide, uh, Facebook. I think, to be honest with you, I think this is the fastest and best run uh, um, mode of uh, communication. Uh, you can join us, you can like us even today. Uh, it's a long, for, for a foreigner, it's a long name, but you can manage, I'm sure, Studium Języków Obcych Uniwersytetu Ekonomicznego we Wrocławiu. It's run by a colleague of mine uh, who does it very well, uh, Mrs. Aldona Hip. Uh, and uh, she, uh, the, the good thing is that she answers all your inquiries on Messenger practically immediately. So that, that is not only an attractive, entertaining uh, um, mode of communication, but also very fast and effective. So I hope to see you soon, whether you're joining us uh, now, next week, or in February, but in any case, enjoy studying here. You've done the right thing. You've made the right pick. This is a fun place to study, and I hope to see you uh, at our Department of Foreign La Languages soon take care thank you thank you so much for this uh, present the presentation uh, from uh, mr Riege. uh it was uh, really uh, good uh, now I, I think that you really good uh, known uh, in uh, that uh, things about that um, uh, and really uh, it's really good to uh, as, as he said it's really good to to like them fan fan fan, fan page on facebook because they are really active uh, like uh, like the other um, uh, other um, groups of of um, of our university uh, uh, okay, now uh, we uh, I've got some uh, some uh, uh, something to say because uh, you 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 need to remember that when you've got some questions for us, uh, save them for the finishing for the end for the end, and we will be um, uh, we will be trying to answering them uh, all. Uh, if you have some some question, write down to this uh, for, for on your note or something like that, and after that you we've got chance to uh, to um, to ask them. Uh, okay, um, now we are going to to. Um, we we're going to uh, have some short break, about 10-15 minutes, and after that we'll be checking also uh, your presence. Uh, hope that you will be uh, back uh, soon, uh, about 10-15 minutes we are going back. Okay, hello, uh, after a short break, uh, now uh, we will be talking about some uh, Erasmus program. Uh, probably uh, you know uh, the, that from your uh, universities or from uh, other uh, histories about that. Okay, um, and after that also uh, some uh, uh, very important information for you. And now uh, some video from uh, Kamila Tvorek uh, from Erasmus program. Hello everybody, welcome at the Wroclaw University of Economics and Business. Uh, my name is Kamila Tvorek and I'm working in the International Cooperation Center. So um, I'm here for you today to present you some information about Erasmus program. Because uh, you are now a part of the Wroclaw University of Economics and Business, so now, as you already know, you can also join the Erasmus Plus program, which is, um, of course, just going abroad to study abroad and maybe have even some internships during that, 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 that the time of your studies. Okay, just a short and brief information for you, because mostly if you are interested in Erasmus program, please come to our office, please ask us a question, write us an email or call us. Um, so we will try to answer you um, whatever you need in any questions uh, you would like to ask. Uh, we are located in building A room number 27 and 16. And of course, you can find our email address and phone number um, on the website, on, on the university website, on the Erasmus, actually, there is uh, like a special part dedicated to Erasmus program, so we can easily find even the information, of course, in English. So you can get some uh, some data from, from, from the website. Okay, so briefly and shortly. At the beginning, as you know, the Erasmus Plus program is the program that you can spend a part of your studies uh, at the uh, partner university abroad. Uh, you can also go to the training ship uh, and you can make uh, some, some, we can work abroad also uh, at, uh, also in the, in the same part of the Erasmus program. So um, actually there will be the next slide about it because I hope like this, um, the, 
some moment of the university will try to manage to cooperate my presentation with my uh, with my video or you so i hope you can see some informations but if not you can make a little note uh, somewhere uh, to have uh, the most important information for you so um, during the erasmus exchange actually you can spend six 36 sorry 36 uh, months abroad uh, on every every kind of your studies so you can go to the master bachelor and of course doctor studies and during every cycle you can spend 12 months abroad uh, of course that uh, concern even the studies and even the training ship so you can add this time together and then for example you can spend uh, like six um, months uh, at the study exchange period at your bachelor studies and also you can spend six months at the training ship at the same uh, during the same three years okay and the thing actually with the training ship it's kind of kind of interesting because you can go abroad even after getting your graduation so you have 12 months after your graduation date to go abroad and to use uh, your uh, your Erasmus training ship program. So that's very, very actually good for the students who are trying to um, plan their future as well, even after the university. So that's also kind of a plan. Okay, and the, now a few words about recruitation, about recruitment time. So um, mostly we're recruiting once a year. Uh, usually it takes uh, time about February and March. So pay attention at the beginning of the year and you will surely get some information maybe on the big billboard at the campus at our university. Or you can, of course, see the informations on our website uh, so uh, you will get that you will get that for sure um, and the great average uh, to take part in the recruitment for Erasmus program is 4.0 so you have to have a good grades <laughs> to use that program and to to get participate okay and the status of the student of UE is Wroclaw despite of the student citizenship of course, you can be a student abroad, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, the thing is that you need to have the status of the student and you have if you are studying. So easily you can go to whatever country you want, but sometimes you have an issue with visa, with the visa sorry. So, of course, we're giving you um, all kind of documents. We're trying to help you with the uh, administration stuff. And uh, there was no problem at all during our uh, last few years uh, for the student for, for the student who are uh, studying here and there are from abroad from some other countries and they want to go for example to turkey to spain or to england okay so you can go abroad to the Erasmus program on every level of your study like i said uh, before like on the last slide uh, bachelor master and doctor studies uh, full-time evening classes or part-time studies as well it counts and students must be formally registered for the major leading to the award of Bachelor, Engineer, Master of Doctoral Degree at the uh, University of Economics and Business in Wroclaw. Okay, and the next slide would be who can participate in the Erasmus Plus program again? Okay, students must be at the time of the departure for the studies at least in the second year of bachelor program and in the second semester of the master program. Uh, what does it mean? It means that when you are studying your studies now, uh, you will start your first semester and during your second semester, during the summer semester, you will get, uh, we will have the recruitment time, yes, the recruitment time. And uh, there is no, po there is no option that you can go earlier abroad than the second year of your studies so please pay attention for that and uh, of course like um, i told you about this average of the grades uh, you have to have 4.0 so that is why you need to have the best grades on the first semester of your studies then we'll get the good documents and you'll get the good average and you can take part uh, in the recruitment for erasmus program for the next academic year Okay, um, students of the third year of bachelor program can apply for the summer semester in the following year. 
Yes, that's true. Uh, and it is not possible to participate in the Erasmus Plus program when a student when a student is granted a dean's leave. Yes, that is true. You have to be a student, you have to study, and that is the sense of the Erasmus Exchange, that you need to spend a semester uh, at, of your time, of your studying time abroad, studying at the same time mostly uh, at our university. Okay, the next uh, slide which I have for you is program conditions. So, so what can Erasmus um, give you. Studying in a foreign university can take place depending on the university during one semester, winter or summer, or one academic year. And as you know, one academic year is winter and summer semester. You cannot like divide it and you cannot spend abroad like the summer semester and the next winter semester of the next academic year. No, that's totally different part. Okay, when a student participates in the program, it is not possible to receive any other form of financing offer under other European Union programs. Yes, you cannot have any other monies from European programs. Although it is possible to receive a student um, scholarship and a social scholarship from our university. So uh, you can have added uh, money. Uh, we can make it short. Okay. Studying abroad under the Erasmus Plus program is recognized as the part of the study program at the University of Economics and Business of, in Wroclaw, like we said before. And during the student stay abroad, the student status and the related things uh, are retained. What it means? It means that if you, are a if you are a student here at the University of Wroclaw, you are also a student abroad. So you are still having your student ID card, you have your student discounts, uh, you have uh, also many more benefits from the uh, organization called ESN, Erasmus Student Network, which actually works at uh, every other universities around Europe. So uh, you also have uh, a little help from them and a little help from the government as a student. You can just like take your benefits from that. Okay, and the uh, Erasmus Plus scholarship. So uh, the subject, uh, the topic to which, which is very interested. Um, at our website, at the beginning, I have to say, you can find the, um, the scholarships amount for this academic year. So please check that if you are very interested because uh, we have a little difference, but mostly it, it, um, it goes around 400 and 500 euros. It depends to which country you would like to go. Uh, every, every every year is getting changed, uh, so please check that as well, but it, there are not a big difference between that. Just like mostly uh, when, for example, this year it's like to Italy, you can go and you can have the scholarship uh, around 450 euros per month. So uh, mostly uh, I think it will be looking like that uh, during next year, but we will see that of course. So please check that information always. And uh, about paying for the university. So students do not pay for the studying at the partner universities. Yes, you're not paying any fees when you're studying in Germany and stuff like that. Students enrolled for the part-time studies with a Polish and other citizenship are partly related from the obligation to pay fees at the Wroclaw University of Economics and Business in accordance with the regulation enforced at the Wroclaw University of Economics and Business. So it exactly means that you don't have to pay for the studies, um, even as the as the student, as the foreign student uh, who are studying at our university. But also sometimes when you come back from the Erasmus exchange, you have to pay for some subject. I I'm, I will not tell you right now because some sometimes it might change. But uh, if you still have to do one exam at our university from the period you went abroad, you still need to pay, but it's like um, it's like a part of the amount of something. So it's it's not like you have to pay all fee for the whole semester. Uh, okay, students receive scholarship from the funds provided under the Erasmus Plus program. Yes, and the amount of the scholarship is indeed to cover the majority of living expenses abroad, and it's different depending on the destination country. So, like I told you, there is a different scholarship amount um, in Italy and in Norway. 
So it depends, uh, of course, uh, where would you like to go? You have to check that at first uh, how many, how how big scholarship you can you can receive for that. And the scholarship guaranteed for studying abroad does not cover all the total living expenses which you're getting abroad. So it's like like it's just like the proper amount to the country you're going to live in. It, it will not like cover sometimes, of course, it like depends because every example is, is different. Um, it will not cover all of your expenses just like that because you can count it easily if you're having like 400 or 500 euros uh, for month. You have to pay for that for the dormitory and for the others for the other expenses. OK. And we, as the International Office, International Cooperation Center, exactly. Uh, of course, um, I have to say that you are very welcome always uh, in our office when uh, you will be easily, uh, I don't know, just like moving at the university. You can also call us, you can write us an email, so you are always very welcome. So please ask us the questions. And of course, if um, the recruitation time will come, so during the February and March, like I said before, um, you will have uh, the information and maybe then you have to uh, be active and like follow all the instructions because like there will be many things going on at the short uh, time period. So so please pay attention to that and just like keep rem keep keep uh, keep rem Keep remember, right, <laughs> that the recruitation recruitment time starts at February or March, so around Easter, I think. Okay, so uh, in our international cooperation office, sorry, center, uh, we're working with a few of my colleagues and Miss Anna Jankowiak, PhD. She is the center director. And Mrs. Ivona Przywenska, uh, she is the head of the um, Erasmus Mobilities and, uh, and Erasmus Mobility in general. So uh, she is the, the manager of the International Mobility Section. And the employees, so that's us, it's me, Kamila Forek, uh, Joanna Tiburczy, <laughs> I try to say that in English, Joanna Tiburczy, Kamila Tworek, Agnieszka Świętczak, and Małgosia Mazurek. Uh, she is responsible for incoming students. So, okay, that would be it for now. I hope uh, you didn't receive too many informations, but um, Hope uh, I give you some points that you can add to your calendar book and you can um, try to plan your Erasmus uh, studying, your Erasmus uh, time abroad, which is very like uh, priceless. Okay, hope to see you soon. Good luck with studying at our university, um, Wroclaw University of Economics and Business and hope to see you soon. So take care and good luck. Bye bye. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, I think uh, I, I, I hope that you are still with us. I hope that you've got a little a little bit of energy uh, still. And uh, now we are going to the, um, to, the, to the to the end of uh, our day. We've got uh, 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 some presentation also for you, but we are going to the to the end. And um, now we are going to uh, checking the presence one more time. And after that, uh, also we will be verifying that. So stay with us. And we are we're giving you about 30 seconds to uh, check the form. And after that, we, we are going, we are moving forward to a presentation of, of the library, our library, and uh, wait for it. Okay, we are moving forward to the next presentation. As I, as I, as I said, uh, that, that will be presentation of our library, um, about our library. And uh, now welcome to the stage, uh, Mr. David Koście, Kościewicza. Okay. So, uh, hello, my name is David, I'm the Deputy Labor Director of the Library and I will spend some of your time to tell you a bit about the University Library or our collections and services we provide you to, well, make your stay within the University as best as possible. So, um, 
The library building is very easy to find within the university campus. We are located in the buildings uh, U and W within the campus, and we have entrance to the main building from the Vielka Street, so it's very easy to find us if you have any issues being present in person within the campus. Ask anyone you want uh, within the uh, university premises, and for sure you will be given a good guidance because it's very easy to find the library building within all our university. Uh, so what in general? we offer. The main building, the library building, building U, is the building where you can find the open access area. So the place within the library when you may come in person, uh, look for the books within the open shelves, take the book for you and borrow it with the assistance of the library, of assistance if you really need to. I will tell you more within a few moments. Um, this, um, so for, we don't only have open access area there, we also have a scientific information department, reading room, we have locker rooms, we have reception, landing room, which is very important, and also within the main building we have a conference room, seminar halls, the patio, and transitions to buildings uh, P and H. So I think that quite often you will visit the library building if you uh, will be present uh, in person within the university premises, and I hope you at least sometimes visit the library too. Not only the building, but our premises with books, with collection databases, what databases, what collections we have, I will tell you within a moment. So, we don't only have, um, not only have the U building, also W building, secondary building, in which we mostly have our internal departments um, connected to the different services of the library. Also within uh, building W, we have um, our university uh, publishing house. We also have interlibrary loan. Um, Computer labs located are also within the W building, seminar halls, and actually everything you can also find within the uh, U building because those buildings are connected. And I think it will be very easy to you if you visit us uh, to use both of them. But remember, the main building is the U building, so the building from entrance from the Vielka Street. What about the collections? Uh, we have quite huge collection of uh, books, journals, and other sources uh, for different disciplines connected to um, economics, management, finance, and other social sciences and humanities, also to some um, arts, um, uh, nature studies, and also sciences, hard sciences, because as you probably are aware, we also have uh, different courses on uh, IT, math, and other subjects uh, on which literature is also collected within the library premises. Um, we are the biggest economic library within the lower Silesia region, so it's very good to visit us at least once uh, to become familiar with the whole collection. Uh, we have plenty of e-resources too. It's especially important now during the pandemic so you don't have to come to the library in person and browse our collections on the spot. You also can use our collections um, being at home using our proxy access which is available for all students. We have the third instruction on the library homepage so please visit our homepage uh, and any information you may find useful is included uh, also on our social medias and we'll go to that uh, a bit later, but remember, e-resources are the key of the library, so uh, factual, economic, business databases we have are fully open to you, so check them out, and if you think some of them truly interesting, contact the librarians and they will give you instructions how to use them more efficiently and how to precisely use specific resources you need for your individual interest and subjects you are interested in. So, the library homepage I've mentioned is very easy to use, very intuitive, so you just need to go there and you will find all regulations, opening hours, any information you may find useful, as well as on our uh, Facebook page. But the library homepage is the best way if you need to uh, very quickly go somewhere from the university uh, homepage and then you will easily find the library homepage too. So, if you want to start using the library, usually you start with the catalog. So, from the library homepage, you may choose either the catalog or just go into the library and then you can connect to our resources using your individual account. If you don't have account yet, uh, do not panic, just uh, click um, the option to register and after that, 
uh, using the icon above the use as guest, you may get into our enrolling uh, form in the library and then very easily step by step you may enroll in the library to use our collections, both printed and not printed collections uh, too. If you have any issues with the form, do not panic, contact the librarian on duty via phone, by MS Teams, any platform, you any, any means you need. Uh, we have plenty of uh, different ways of contacting the librarians, be it the library homepage, phones, MS Teams, Facebook, Twitter, and also you may always come in person if you need to. Um, after you have your library card, it's very easy to log in and borrow a book. You just need to um, go to the library catalog, find the specific book you need, and check out if it's available to being borrowed. I'm not going to tell you much about this call number or signature. It's not very important for the time being. Just remember, if the book is available in the open access area, you may come and use it on the spot. If it's available, you may borrow the book. So order the book and collect the book from the lending room, and it's unavailable. You have to wait until it's available available one way or another. Uh, the lending room is the place when you can pick up the, the ordered book, so you may just come in person and collect the book. Also, you may read this book uh, there. You can also set all other issues you have with the library. If you have any issue with your account, you need to um, activate your account or do anything other, just come to the lending room and if you're not sure, if you have to, uh, or maybe you can just do it by phone or MS Teams, just contact the library and we will give you enough information to uh, set any issues you may acquire, uh, you may go into uh, using our resources. Uh, so, speaking a bit uh, more about the open access area, we have uh, four floors in the uh, building queue. Each floor is color coded, so it's very easy to find specific collection. If you know that, for example, you are interested in IT, and IT is on the fourth floor, it's a uh, blue floor, so it's very easy to find. If you even, uh, ever will be a bit uh, mistaken by the calls, but the arrangement, you can always ask a librarian on duty. Okay, so the open access area is the main part of the library when you may uh, browse collection on the spot and it's very convenient because uh, you can uh, use our collections uh, not only on the spot but also borrow the books exactly uh, directly from the shelf. So you can take the book, uh, take it to the self-service lending machine, then borrow the book without the need of assistance of a librarian. It's very simple, very fast, very clean and you can uh, come to the library, uh, find the book, borrow the book and lend, um, return it after uh, you don't longer need it. Uh, within the open access area, we also have study cabins, uh, you, which you may use uh, for individual and group work. For the time being, they are out of order, but, uh, well, I hope that soon after the pandemic you will be able to uh, come and also use study cabins, especially when you will be working on your bachelor and master thesis. Uh, so, remember, when it comes to borrowing the book, uh, you can do it yourself. You can come to the library, find specific book, borrow it using our self-service uh, lending machine, and after you don't longer need the book, you can return it also without the need uh, of assistance of the librarian uh, using our self-service uh, returning machine, which is located near the main entrance to the library from the Vilka Street. So it's very simple, very clean, and if you have any issues with any of those steps, contact the librarian on duty or contact the library uh, itself, the lending room, and we'll do our best to help you solve all your issues. Uh, so, to sum up, a library is the place where you should go uh, to use our uh, collections, use our databases, use our services, and everything uh, we provide you. Uh, to help you in efficient, effective studies. Uh, most important thing is that um, we don't only provide you core resources, raw resources, like databases, books, journals, we also provide you information services. We have scientific information department in which uh, specialized librarians work very hard to give you enough information to prepare good bibliographic lists for your projects, for your, for your dissertations, and for your presentations too. If you have any issues with finding relevant literature, relevant resources, data, if you want to get information on economic indicators, company profiles, income 
income statements and other information regarding uh, business, economics, finance or anything you may find interesting and useful during your studies, feel free to contact the library, the scientific information department and use our uh, services to uh, facilitate the best time of studying you can uh, during the stay within our university and remember we are here for you so to provide you as good service as possible. So if you have any if you have any questions, any needs, let's make contact, uh, follow us on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and most of all, contact us on MS Teams. You all have uh, your students' accounts on Office 365, so remember, we have two, uh, so you can contact us uh, using those means to solve all those issues and to uh, remember that uh, we are here for you, so you are invited to visit the library and to use our services. So uh, thank you for your time, and I hope we'll see each other in the library after the pandemic and before we'll contact via different remote means and we'll help you uh, study best you can and use our resources in the most efficient way. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that presentation uh, about uh, library. Uh, it's really, um, it's really good to to know uh, that our our library, our library, because uh, a whole crew from that the, they are really kind. You should re you should really uh, use that after um, after these uh, weird times. Uh, okay, now we are going forward to to the next presentation. Uh, it will be presentation about our business cooperation center, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Janetta Teklak will be talking about uh, this to you. Hello everyone. I wish I could see I could say that I am very happy to see you all, but I can't. So I hope that you are somewhere there feeling good. My name is Janetta and I'm a specialist at Business Cooperation Center and I'm here to tell you uh, a bit about our unit. Uh, our unit was established in 2008, first as career services, and then in 2018, we transformed into business cooperation center that consists of two units. One of them is career services, and the other one is business relations. Uh, that's why we like to call ourselves the bridge between business and between science, and between business and you, between students. Um, so first of all, congratulations. We are very happy that you chose Wrocław and you chose our university uh, here in Wrocław. You are among uh, 1,500 people who managed to pass all the exams and be where you are right now. So this is the first step you took on your professional career. Uh, but what next? Many of you probably still don't know what to do next, what are your future career plans, and that's okay, but the sooner you start, the better. And that's where we can be very helpful. So I will shortly describe you what we do, but first of all, I would like to encourage you to follow our Facebook site and our um, uh, our Facebook profile, where you can always be updated and find uh, the information about our programs. So. Uh, Every year we have something we call grad graduate trace studies and we ask our students about uh, their experience. We ask uh, what is their current occupations and over 50% of our students work as a specialist shortly after gra they graduate. So that's a very good news. I know that uh, most of you want to be managers and want to have their own companies, but it may not happen so soon. So after you work, you will probably work as a specialist, but we also have a different of occupations, we even have some uh, scientists, um, scientist workers. The second question we asked was if you um, undertook any additional activities during your studies. And by additional activities, we understand um, trainings, courses, workshops, but also internships. And over 50% of our students uh, did it. So we are very, uh, you are very active students. Uh, unfortunately, only 27% used our services as business cooperation center, but that's okay. That's why I'm here to encourage you to come and visit us. Okay, last question we asked was if our students worked during their studies. And the good news is that over 80% of students already have a job during their studies. And that's also uh, a part when we can be very helpful. 
Uh, building your potential always have solid foundation. Uh, solid foundations means your hard skills, soft skills, and everything you do during your studies to build your professional image. So at the very beginning of your journey, probably you won't have many things to put in your CV, but don't worry about that. Uh, everything you do additionally, taking part in courses, workshops, or being in, organ uh, in student organizations, uh, is something you can put in your CV and make it look very promising. So, uh, your professional success depends on your engagement and everything you do uh, has meaning during studies. So, to prove my words, I would uh, like to tell you a story about three of our students. So, meet Tomek, Melania and Tomek number two. Uh, they are all different people with different hobbies, different interests and different passions in life. But they all came to our office a couple of years ago and asked for help. So what do they have in common? They are all very hardworking, very engaged. They took additional uh, development opportunities. They had their dreams, they had their goals and we helped them to achieve it. So, as usually, it started with conversation. They came to our office to talk with career counselor, uh, who helped them to create their CV, to set their goals, to prepare them for job interviews, and so on. And that's something you can always do. That's something you should do at some point during your studies. What's also, also important that you can always ask for a meeting with a psychologist if things get difficult uh, and our counselors and uh, career counselors and our coaches and psychologists speak english so you are always very welcome at our office uh, second of all they all took part in uh, some uh, additional activities as a business cooperation center we organize many events many trainings with business for example with hewlett packard enterprise every year we have workshops uh, that we call hpe academy and during those work workshops you can not only uh, learn a bit of excel or learn uh, how to work in a multicultural environment but also can know a company a bit better and the second program, for example, is Corporate Readiness Certificate uh, with IBM. So if any of you plan your career in IT, that's a good uh, program for you. Another big event uh, at our university is always uh, Job First. Uh, this year, unfortunately, it will be uh, online, so stay tuned and look for our Facebook for other information. But it's also a very good way to just meet companies, to ask them questions, to get to know everything you need to know about your future job. We hope next year or even next semester we will be able to bring Job Fairs back to our campus and you will be able to meet our employees live. Uh, another program uh, I highly recommend, not only because I coordinate the program, but also because I believe it's a very unique opportunity to verify your future career, to verify your goals. It's a mentoring program. And during six months of the program, you have a chance to work with your mentor, mentor from different fields, from finance, IT, HR, and science, and many, many more. And this very experienced mentor will help you to verify your goals, to motivate you to do more, and to follow the path that he already had. So it's a, a very good program for you. And last but not least, uh, they all took internships and very, uh, or they found a job during their, uh, during their studies. So if you want to start working at your professional career right now, you can uh, join uh, one of our internship programs or you can find many, many uh, job offers at our job teaser platform, which is also international. It's for free. You can sign in, create your profile, create your CV and look through really hundreds of uh, job and internship um, uh, offers. So uh, all of this information can be found at our website uh, and our Facebook. So once again, I highly recommend to visit it. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And that basically was the key to the success of Tomek, Melania and Tomek number two. Uh, they all took part in at least one or more activities that I told you about. Uh, to prove my words, uh, Tomek number one is right now working in, uh, mm, a, a, as a project manager. He's also a great photographer following his passion. 
Uh, Melania is a co-founder uh, co of her uh, blog about environment, about ecological lifestyle, Poprawmy. She also has uh, a lot of work as a volunteer and she's social media specialist. Uh, and Tomek number two also work in the uh, marketing department. He is also a head of Enactus, so maybe you had a chance to meet him uh, today. Uh, he has Agile certificate that he um, he got during our programs, and they are all very young, successful students, thanks to our little help. So uh, they wouldn't be way where they are right now if they weren't engaged from the very beginning of their studies. And that is something you should all do if you want uh, your uh, future career to be brilliant. So now your journey begins. So you can choose to grow and develop with us, or you can choose to just study and wait for what the life brings. <laughs> I, of course, encourage you to take these first uh, options. And I promise that if you choose to work with us, uh, we will do everything we can to help you reach not only success, but also satisfaction in everything you do in your life, professionally and after work. Uh, we know that your path to the top is sometimes very difficult. Sometimes it's especially difficult for foreign students like you because you don't really know yet uh, how uh, our Wrocław looks like and how our, how our, our um, market looks like. So you can always come to find help at our office and you don't have to walk this difficult path alone. So uh, you can always come, maybe not now, not now you can't come and visit us, but you can write an email, call us, and we will give you every information you need. I hope that we will have a chance to meet you all in person very soon. But for now, stay safe, take care of each other, and thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Janetta, for this uh, for this presentation. Uh, it's great. It's really great to know our units uh, because uh, it's great to know this unit also because they are really uh, helped uh, a bunch of studies in the past and they will be doing uh, it well uh, also in the future. Okay, uh, now uh, we are moving uh, forward to the Q and A session. If you got some questions, uh, ask them on the chat. Uh, hope that you've got some questions for us if you don't have any questions uh, probably we, we we've done our job uh, well uh, I don't know maybe if you got some questions uh, I we, we, are, we are giving you about 20 seconds to ask them uh, if you are if you don't have uh, we'll be um, we'll be closing our event we are we are waiting still for for some questions if you if you've got them Okay, we've got some questions, yes? One, 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 okay. What is the question? Can I use the gym on the campus? Yes, you can use the gym on the campus. Uh, it is available on uh, SFIS, and there, uh, it is not free of charge, but you have to pay for attending the gym there. But it's quite cheap uh, for our yes. students. It's yes. cheaper than for the others. Okay, uh, probably uh, it was only one sports question. Uh, we don't have probably any other. Uh, but remember, we remember if you really, we, if you will have any questions, you also you always can ask them for uh, to our uh, students' government. And uh, remember that you can al always uh, write them on the to the email or to the fan page, and they will be always um, helping you in the beginning of your of your road on our university. Uh, it's time to to say goodbye, probably. Uh, if yes, probably. No, we've got some question. All, all one one more. 
how do you how do we apply apply to resist for e exams ah okay. uh, uh, so to retake the exam in in case you fail the uh, first attempt uh, you just need to uh, speak to your lecturer uh, if uh, here uh, he or she said the uh, another date uh, for the second attempt uh, as we mentioned previously in presentation, they are obliged to give you a second chance, like one more attempt at least, but is uh, discussed and set with your lecture um, accordingly. So, Okay, if there are any others, we are waiting for some, yes? How do we submit excusal absences? Uh, so if you were absent during uh, classes, uh, just give the reason, uh, as, as uh, also was uh, previously mentioned during presentation, you have two uh, absences that you don't need to make excuse of. Uh, so if you didn't sleep well previous night... Anna was talking about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's fine, but remember just two uh, absence. In case it's your third uh, absence, just uh, let uh, know the lecturers the reason. Was it the health issue or family issue? Uh, if the lecturer will not accept uh, this as the excuse, uh, goes to the dean office and contact uh, them directly with this issue. Yes, uh, and it was at the end of the of the our, our questions. If you still have something, uh, some uh, you really have had, uh, you really can uh, ask the ask the gover students government on our fan page or something like that. And now we're coming to to the to the um, end of our uh, day. It was really a pleasure to uh, to have you uh, there. It it, um, it was a really pleasure to open this day for you. And I hope that you've got a lot of informations to to have the good start on our university. Uh, good luck for you all and um, remember uh, that you always uh, can uh, have some help in the uh, in the other students and, uh, and and stay safe and tuned see you soon <laughs>